In my last video, I made a CGI scene featuring a Doctor Strange inspired portal that I made in Blender. If you wish to learn how to make a similar portal, you've come to the right place. Welcome! In this tutorial, I will show you how to make your very own customizable Doctor Strange portal, just like this one. Please keep in mind that this is my first ever tutorial, so I apologize if any part is not as clear as it should be. If you have any questions about any of the steps mentioned in the tutorial, please leave a comment and I'll help you out. With that said, let's get started. First off, we save this file. I like to name it something like, Dr. Strange Portal, Master File, so that you can always append the portal from this file whenever you need it. Then, we select everything in the scene and press X to delete everything. Afterwards, add any sort of object to the scene, it doesn't really matter which one you pick. I'm going to pick a cube. We're not going to be using this geometry anyway. Head over to the Geometry Nodes tab and we can start making the portal. Once we're in this workspace, you'll notice there is a spreadsheet on the left by default. We don't need it for this tutorial. Since we're going to be animating some values later, I'm going to change this to a timeline viewer. Once you're ready, click on New to create a new geometry nodes modifier. You'll see the Group Input and Group Output nodes appear. The input node is feeding the cube geometry into the output. We don't need this cube, so you can cut the connection. We're going to use geometry nodes to create a fully customizable system of particle emitters before we do the particle simulation for the portal. As we know, the portal should be circular, so let's add a circle to the scene. We want a curve circle, not a mesh circle. Hit Shift A to bring up the add menu and look for curve circle. Connect the node to the output node so that we can see what we're doing. As you can see, the circle is lying flat on the floor. We need the portal to face forward in the y direction. To do this, we add a transform node and rotate the circle around the x axis by 90 degrees. After this, add a curve to points node so that we can create a set of points around this circle. Ignore the huge mess of blobs that we see on the screen, it's just showing you that points are being created. We will set the number of points on this node to be the same as the resolution value on the curve circle node. If we plug both of these into the group input node, you can see we get an adjustable parameter on the modifier stack on the right hand side. Hit N to open up the side panel, and with the group input node selected, go to the group tab and here you can select and rename this parameter to whatever you like. I'm gonna call it number of emitters. Here we see that we can also choose a default value as well as the minimum and maximum possible values for this parameter. We can also change the number of emitters directly from the modifier stack on the right, giving us maximum control. Next we add an instances on points node. Everything will disappear because we haven't selected any object to instance yet. Hit Shift A and add a mesh circle node and plug this into the instance input. Decrease the radius of the mesh circle just so we can see things a little better. Now we can see we have 64 small circles making up our overall portal shape. Change the fill type of the mesh circle to N-Gon, since we want this geometry to emit particles later on. All the circles are oriented in the same direction, and we don't want that. We want the circles to be rotated towards the tangential direction of the portal curve. Blender lets us do this automatically. We can plug the rotation field data from the curve to points node into the rotation input on the instances node. Now we see our problem has been solved. You might want to reduce the vertex count on the mesh circle since we don't need a lot of detail on the emitters. I'm going to set it to 8. Now, I am going to plug the mesh circle radius into the input node and rename the parameter to radius of emitters. Next, we want to be able to rotate the portal on the y-axis and control this separately as a parameter. To do this, add a combine xyz node and plug this into the rotation vector input on the transform node. We want to set our x-axis rotation back to 90 degrees, but when we enter 90, we see that the portal is clearly not rotated to 90 degrees. This is because the combine xyz node treats inputs as radians, which is just another unit for angles, instead of degrees. The basic conversion is that pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. We want to work with degrees, not radians, so let's set up a conversion node using a vector math node set to multiply. Click and drag on the three entries to type on all three at the same time, then simply enter pi slash 180 like this. Now the circle looks correct. 
we can now plug the y value on the combine xyz node into the input node, and rename this parameter to something like portal rotation. I'm going to animate the portal rotation with a driver. Simply type in hashtag frame and hit enter. Now if you play the animation, you can see that the portal is spinning slowly. The driver is updating the rotation value every frame by using the frame number. Just realized I forgot to plug in the curve circle radius into the input node. Rename this to portal radius and use the side panel to reorder the input parameters if you want to, using the arrow buttons. Here we can see that messing around with the parameters on the modifier stack will automatically update the portal emitters in real time, which is great. Next, we want to animate the portal opening up. In my video, you can see that the portal sort of spirals open like this. To achieve that effect, we need to combine two things. We need to animate the scale of the portal increasing and we need to animate the portal being drawn out like this from nothingness. Let's do the second effect first. Let me move these nodes out of the way for now and connect our original curve to the output. Now, we need to trim the curve so let's add a trim curve node. Now if we try playing with the values, you can see that nothing is happening. This is because curve circles are cyclic, meaning they don't have a beginning or an end. The trim curve node is trying to find an end to trim the curve from. To fix this, add a set spline cyclic node and make sure the cyclic checkbox is unchecked. Now we can see that there is a small gap in the circle, which won't affect our scene much, so don't worry about it. You'll also notice quickly that increasing the resolution of the circle will actually make this gap smaller. Anyway, now we see that the trim curve node finally works. I'm going to change the portal rotation driver to frame multiplied by a negative number, to make the next few steps work correctly. This will make the portal spin in the opposite direction. To me, it makes more numerical sense to make the portal open from 0 to 1, so I'm going to use the end value of this node, not the start value. Plug the end value into the input node. Rename this to portal open factor. Now we can conveniently use this parameter to animate the portal opening up. We also want to make the portal grow as it opens up. This is really easy to do. Simply plug the portal open factor into the scale input on the transform node. I'm going to speed up the rotation of the portal a little by entering frame multiplied by negative 4. Now let's set up some quick keyframes for the opening of the portal. I'm going to set the open factor to 0 at frame 0. Hover over the field and hit I to insert a keyframe, or click the keyframe button next to the field. Now set the open factor to 1 at any later frame of your choice, and insert another keyframe. I'm going to pick frame 75 for this tutorial. Now we can see the portal correctly spiraling open when we play the animation. To exaggerate this spiral effect even more, you can increase the speed of the portal rotation even further. Now let's bring back the nodes we set aside earlier and reconnect them correctly. Here we now notice our next problem. The number of emitters stays unchanged throughout the opening animation, so they start out really tightly packed together, and end up more spaced out as the portal fully opens up. This is not what we want. We want the spacing between the emitters to stay roughly the same throughout the animation. As the portal opens up, we want more and more emitters to be added, while maintaining the spacing in between them. You can choose to do this the easy way by manually animating the number of emitters parameter on the modifier stack to start at a low value, and increase as the portal opens up. This will require a bit of trial and error to do correctly. However, we don't want to have too many parameters to keyframe. Using math nodes, we can make the same portal open factor parameter also correctly drive the number of emitters. Follow along closely to learn how to do this. The basic idea is that we want the length of the curve at any frame to correctly determine the number of emitters, according to a preset emitter spacing of our choice. First, we must set up some nodes to calculate the length of the curve at any frame. The circumference of a circle is given by 2 pi r, where r is the radius. Let's do this first. Add a math node, set it to multiply. Enter 2 asterisk pi like so, which will automatically give us the value of 2 pi. Plug the portal radius parameter from the input node into the bottom input. Now, this node will output the circumference of the fully sized portal. Next, to correctly calculate the length of the curve at any frame, we need to multiply the portal open factor to the circumference two times, and here's why. Let's say we pause the animation when the portal is roughly halfway open. The portal open factor at this frame will be around 0.5. 2 pi r will give us the radius of the fully open circle. However, when the portal is half open, you can see that the radius is also halved, 
but we are also only getting half of the circumference of this smaller circle. Therefore, we will have to multiply 0.52 times in order to get the correct length of the curve. Let's do this now. Hit Shift D to duplicate the multiply node two times and connect the top inputs like so. Then, plug in the portal open factor parameter into the bottom input of both nodes. This system will output the length of the curve at any frame correctly. The next thing we want to do is to divide this length by our preferred spacing, to output the correct number of emitters required per frame. Duplicate one of the multiply nodes, set it to divide, and connect it to the chain. The bottom value will be the spacing we want to input. I'm going to use 0.1 for now. We can now plug this output into the resolution input of the curve circle node and the count input of the curve to points node like this. Now if we play the animation, we can see that the spacing between the emitters stays the same throughout the animation, which is exactly what we wanted. However, we've run into a small problem. The portal looks jagged at the start of the opening animation. This is because at earlier frames, the resolution of the curve circle is very low. We can fix this easily by adding a multiply node before the resolution input and setting the bottom value to something around 2 to 5. The higher you go, the smoother the circle will be, but you don't need to go too high. Make sure this node is not affecting the count input, it should only be affecting the resolution input. Basically, we want the resolution of the circle to be at least two times the number of emitters to reduce the jaggedness. Now if we play the animation, we see the portal opening animation works beautifully. Now that we've finalized the portal opening animation, it's time to make the portal closing animation. You can choose to animate the portal open factor from 1 back to 0 if you want to, and this is actually what I did in my previous portal videos. The only issue with this is that the portal will close in the opposite direction to the spin direction. This is not a hugely noticeable issue, since the portal closing animation in my videos is much faster than the opening animation. However, if you want the portal to spiral closed in the same direction as the portal spin, I will show you how to do this now. If you would like to simply just animate the same open factor parameter from 1 back to 0 to close the portal, you can feel free to skip to the next timestamp instead. See you there. Okay, so this section is for those of you who want your portal to close in the same direction as the spin direction. The key to doing this is to go back to our trim curve node and use the start value this time to create a new parameter. The start value trims the circle in the opposite direction of the end value. Plug this value into the input node and rename this parameter to portal close factor. Let's now use the timeline window to quickly create some keyframes to close the portal, like so. Animate the value of the portal close factor from 0 to 1 to close the portal. The open factor should remain at 1. When we play the animation now, we notice that the spiral effect is working, but the portal close factor is not affecting the scale of the portal at all. We want the portal to shrink as it closes. For this, we need to figure out a way to mathematically use both the open factor and the close factor together to drive the scale correctly, during both the opening animation and the closing animation. If we select frames from between the opening animation and the closing animation and study the portal open factor and portal close factor values, we notice that subtracting the portal close factor from the portal open factor will give us an appropriate scale factor for each frame. Let's put this plan into action. Hit Shift A and add a math node, then set it to subtract. Plug the portal open factor value into the top input and plug the portal close factor into the bottom input. By the way, if you want to, you can clean up your node graph just a little bit by duplicating the group input node like this. It's entirely up to you. Now we plug the output from this node into the two multiply nodes like so, replacing the earlier connections. We also need to plug this new output into the scale input on the transform node. Now we see the overall animation runs perfectly fine, and the portal closes in the same direction as the spin direction. Now that we're done with that part, I'm going to take this opportunity to increase the value on the resolution multiplier by a little bit to reduce the jaggedness further. This is one of those values that is really yours to play around with until you're satisfied. Also, I realized that I forgot to plug in the emitter spacing value from the divide node into the group input. This is a parameter we want to have control on, so let's do this. I will also appropriately rename it. In case you skipped the section from before and you're surprised at why there's suddenly two group input nodes, you can plug this into the same group input node from before, it will make no difference. By the way, now is a good time to get rid of the number of emitters parameter since we're no longer using it. Now we can conveniently change the emitter spacing value to our liking. Oops, Blender has crashed since I accidentally slid it into a negative value. The divide node is now telling Blender to create a negative number of emitters, which is not physically possible, of course. 
Here's a good opportunity to learn how to avoid crashes or other problems like this in the future. It's good to always check your default, minimum and maximum settings for the parameters in the group input node. I'm going to set the minimum value for the emitter spacing to be something like 0.0001. Anything that's greater than 0, because dividing by 0 will also cause problems. Alright, now we're pretty much done with the geometry node setup. It is time to make some final adjustments on the parameters and then we'll be ready to start making our particle system. I'm just going to reduce the emitter spacing a little bit, and make the radius of the emitters smaller. Now let's head over to the general workspace. With the portal selected, head over to the particle systems tab and click the plus icon to add a new particle system. Let's quickly rename this to shards, and I'll also quickly just increase the number of particles to 5000. If we play the animation, we notice that we've come across our first problem. The particle system is not using our geometry nodes object to create the particles. We could try to fix this by opening the source menu here and enabling use modifier stack which tells Blender to use the modifiers to generate the particles. However, when we try playing the animation again, we see it still doesn't fix the issue. Why is this so? Well, the reason is that these emitter objects in the portal are instances, meaning Blender doesn't treat them as real geometry to generate particles from. To fix this, we must jump back into geometry nodes and add just one last node, a realize instances node. This node tells Blender to turn the instances into real geometry data at the respective locations and rotations. Now, when we head back to the general workspace and play the animation, we see the particles finally taking on the portal shape, which is what we want. Next, we need to create the shard object to use in the particle system. I'm going to create an icosphere, reduce the subdivisions to 1, and scale it down while in edit mode so that the scale is automatically applied. Now we can click on the X on the axes at the top right corner to view the icosphere from the right hand side. Toggle X-ray mode and box select half of the icosphere, then hit E to extrude along the Y axis like so. Now we have our shard object. We also want to add in another object, which we will call a spark. Add another icosphere and scale it down just like before. Move it next to the shard object. Let's now rename the shard object and the spark object correctly, in order to keep everything organized. Next. We click back on the portal, go back to the particle systems tab and go to render, and set the particle system to render as an object, then pick the shard object. Mess around with the scale value until you have something that you're happy with. All the particles are rotated the same way, and to fix this, we check the rotation checkbox. Now when we play back the animation, we see that the particles are generated with the correct rotation data. Next, we give the particles a starting normal velocity. Now, we see that the particles are shooting outwards correctly. Next, we change some values in the particle system settings. Turn down the lifetime, turn up the number of particles. You can also change the seed if you want to. We now have something that looks closer to the final portal. The shards seem to be shooting further out on the bottom than the top, but that's due to gravity's influence on the shards. You can head down to the field weight section and turn down the gravity. I have set it to zero. You can now see that the portal is beginning to take shape. Keep messing around with the numbers as you please. I'm going to set the normal velocity of the particles to something in between positive 5 to positive 7. We can see that at the start of the opening animation, the particles initially shoot out violently upwards before taking the correct shape of the circle. This is because, by default, Blender uses a Bezier interpolation on keyframes, meaning that the portal opening and closing animation will start slow, speed up, and then end slowly. This means that for the first 7 to 10 frames or so, the circle is so small that all the particles are shot out in one particular direction. There are two ways to fix this issue. The first way is to make the particle simulation start at a later frame, for example, frame 10, like I've done here. This will fix the problem. Another potential solution is to select the portal open factor and close factor keyframes, hit T and change the interpolation to linear. This will also fix the issue, however, the portal will not open up smoothly like before. The opening animation will end abruptly. There are many instances where linear interpolation is better, however in this case, I personally prefer Bezier. So I'm going to stick with the method of delaying the frame start to 10 frames. To make the portal feel more natural, I'm going to increase the lifetime randomness all the way to 1, 
and increase the number of particles. Increasing the randomized value under velocity will also give the particles some random movement in the three axes, giving the portal a more 3D feel from the side. Alright, so before we add our next particle system, we shall add a ground plane. Move this plane underneath the portal and scale it up to your liking. Now with the plane selected, head over to the physics tab and enable collision. You may want to tweak some of the collision settings later, but for now the default settings are fine. The collision modifier will allow particles from the simulation to interact with the ground plane. Click back onto the portal, add a new particle system and rename it Spark Short. This will be a particle system consisting of sparks with a short lifetime, which will enhance our portal and integrate it into the background a little better. For the sparks, we want gravity to affect them, so don't change the gravity to zero like we did before for the shards. Select, use modifier stack, give the particles a normal velocity similar to the shards, Decrease the lifetime to something that's not too long but longer than the shard's lifetime. Something in between 7 and 10 should be fine. Select, render as object, choose the, spark, object we made earlier. If the particles are not attached correctly to the portal, you might have to go to the spark object and right click and set origin to geometry. Now, finalize the scale of the sparks. Change the starting frame of the simulation to frame 10 like before. Now when we press play, we see we have an organic system of sparks being generated, falling to the ground and bouncing off correctly. I personally think these sparks give more life to the portal. Now, it's your job to keep messing around with the number of particles, the lifetime and other values until you get a simulation that looks good to you. Make sure not to go too overboard with these values though. Once you're done with this particle system, add another new particle system. Select the same spark short system we made earlier, but click this button up here to duplicate the particle system. Rename this new particle system sparks long, as we want some of the sparks to stick around for longer. Reduce the number of particles, mess with the seed value and increase the lifetime to something larger, like 15. Now I'm going to mess around a little bit more with the numbers in all three particle systems until I get something I'm happy with. You should do the same with your own portal. You can also go back and adjust the length of your shard object if you feel the need to do so. Once you get a simulation that you're happy with, there's one thing you'll want to do, You'll want to animate the scale of the particles going from zero to full size as the portal opens up, and vice versa when the portal is closing at the end. Do this quickly for all three particle systems. Once you're done with this, select any of the three particle systems and open up the cache menu. Hit Bake All Dynamics to bake the simulation into your memory. You can also choose Disk Cache. If you don't want to fill up your RAM and you want to bake to your hard drive instead. Now you can scrub through the animation using the playhead on the timeline. Great, since we're now happy with the portal simulation, select the shard object and head over to the materials tab and click on new to create a new material. I'm going to call it, emission. Before we make any changes to the material, let's go into rendered view mode and make sure we select the correct render engine. I prefer cycles, but the portal should look okay in Eevee too. Now let's head back to the Materials tab and start creating the material. I'm going to swap out the principled BSDF for an emission shader and play around with the emission strength and color until I get something that looks good. If you haven't done so yet, go back to the Render tab and enable Motion Blur. Next, we want to select the Spark object and apply the same emission material. When you're done, add a camera and reposition it to face the portal. Whenever I need to quickly set up a camera without needing much precision, I like to head to the View tab and select Lock Camera to view and adjust the camera like so. After this, I'm going to head over to the World Settings tab and change the background color to something that's much darker, almost black. Now let's do our first test render. The portal is looking great. Now it's a matter of going back to your particle system settings and playing around with the values until you get something that you're happy with personally. I really think it's important that you should experiment with numbers yourself to get the look that you want. But otherwise, the tutorial is pretty much complete. Here's a reminder. Make sure you increase the lifetime randomize and the velocity randomness to around 1 for all three particle systems. I only showed this process for the shards particle system, but forgot to record myself doing so for the other two particle systems. In the last part of this video, I'll really quickly show you how to import this portal into any scene of your choice. Let's imagine this is a scene you want to import the portal into. Go to File, click Append. Locate your Doctor Strange Portal Master file and double-click it. Go into the Node Group folder and select your Portal Geometry Node System and append it. 
Next, we go to File, click Append again, but this time go into the Particle Systems folder and append all three particle systems that we created. Next, add any object. I'm going to use a cube. Go to the Modifiers tab on the right hand side and add a Geometry Nodes modifier. Select the Portal Node group that we appended. Blender will automatically create the system of emitters for us. Now you can move and rotate it to wherever you want. After this, adjust the parameters to your liking. Make sure to set the portal rotation driver to hashtag frame multiplied by a negative number. Now, we can animate the portal open factor and close factor to open and close the portal, at any frame of your choice. Next, we head over to the particle systems tab and add three particle systems. Select the shards, sparks short, and sparks long particle systems from the drop down menu. I just realized the scale keyframes from the master file were carried over here, so right click the scale box on all three particle systems and clear the keyframes for now. We can now set whatever scale we want for the particles. Adjust the frame start and frame end values to the correct numbers, according to when you want your portal to open and close. Now, we can set the correct scale keyframes so that the particles will grow as the portal opens, and shrink as the portal closes. Remember to repeat these steps for all three particle systems. Select the surrounding geometry, go to the physics tab and give it a collision modifier. Now, we can bake the simulation, and we're pretty much ready to render. Well done on making it all the way through the tutorial. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.